Nebraska, for the first time this year, is an underdog. How's that sit with Matt Rule? We'll discuss it next. You are locked on Nebraska, your daily Nebraska Cornhuskers podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, good morning, and thanks for making Locked On Nebraska your first listen today and every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet, and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Head to FanDuel.com to get started. Okay, hello on this Tuesday. I am Mitch Sherman of The Athletic, Connor Happer of 1620 The Zone in Omaha, is alongside me as always and we will ask this question at the outset of the show get right to it does nebraska have indiana right where the huskers want the hoosiers as just about a full touchdown underdog ahead of saturday that line was up to six and a half late monday on FanDuel. it has been growing let's just hear about this right away from matt rule here's what he said on monday at his weekly press conference this is probably I, I don't I don't try to I try not to look at the lines and all that, but I'm pretty sure we're probably the underdog, right? So, this is the, our guys' first time for doing that, right? So, I, I I much prefer that, you know. I love I love turn on game day and seeing them all pick the other team. That's good for us, you know. So, you know, it's just kind of who I am and who a lot of our guys are. Okay, are you buying that? Does he like it? Yes, I am 100 percent buying it. Um, <laughs> I think it. That makes a lot of sense from what we know about Matt Rule. Um, and I think he's, mm-hmm. you know, we've talked about it before. He's a button pusher. He's a motivator. Like this one gives him a very e- easy button to push, right? Um, and so I, I, I've i thought that Nebraska as an underdog in this game, you know, really since the end of last week, both teams didn't play this past weekend. Um, that's a really good spot and an interesting spot for Nebraska to be in. And it's a different spot. They've been 27 and a half point favorites. Six and a half point favorites, three, 30 and a half point favorites, nine and a half point favorites, 10 point favorites, and seven point favorites in their games this year. They haven't been less than a touchdown favorite basically the entire year. And now they're a touchdown underdog. It flips the other way. Um, all the talks about Indiana, like we discussed that on the show yesterday, I think it's a great spot for Nebraska to be in. At the very least, it's different and it should give them a nice little, nice little kick going into this week. I buy it. I buy it if I, and and I I overall buy it, especially if I read what Matt Rule had to say, hearing him say it, I I wasn't sure if he was totally convinced that he likes the situation that they're in. I I was, I was a little bit unsure, like in his delivery of that. I think he believes that Indiana is legitimately pretty good. And it's one thing to be an underdog. Eh, It's one thing to be an underdog if it's a two point dog and, and, you feel great about your team's chances to win. He said that he believes Indiana is a legitimate top 10 team. And that's hard to say based on the schedule that the Hoosiers have played. And if you want to hear us talk about Indiana's schedule, go listen to our Monday episode because we fully got into what we think that means for this upcoming game for Nebraska. Getting to hear Matt Rule on Monday, I came away from it believing that he's a believer in Indiana. And while he likes being in the underdog role, like just in general in football, I'm not sure that he loves what they're walking into on Saturday in Bloomington. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, that, that's interesting because I was less sure. I was less sure about that. Like, I, I think we probably both let our feelings on the actual situation, like sort of dictate how we feel that the coach yeah. feels about it. But like when he was like, yeah, Rejected. I think he had every bit of top 10 team and you know all the, all that stuff. Like that is something that you... If if you're the coach of the underdog team, I, I feel like you want them, you know, and you like the position that you're in. You want your guys to believe that they're that everyone thinks they're as good as they can possibly be. You know what I mean? Like it's everyone's saying they're good. Look at how good they are. Look at how good they are. And he wants Nebraska to rise to the rise to the occasion and rise to the challenge. So I think that fits pretty perfectly with 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 what he said. Um, and I don't know, I, I wonder what he actually, um, thinks of, you know, obviously I think he has a great deal of respect for what they're doing and what the whole conference is up to so far right now. But like, I don't know. I wonder, 
I wonder how that'll look after Saturday because what we don't know about both of these teams is possibly even more intriguing about what we do than what we do know. Oh, I agree. So the good thing about Matt Rule, one good thing about Matt Rule is we usually find out after the game what he really thought about it going in. Like yeah. he doesn't show his true colors before the game. He will next week. He's going to tell you about how great Ohio State is. And I think he truly believes that Ohio State is a great team coming uh, no, off of a bye after its first loss of the season. Whoa. We'll we'll talk about that in, in a few days. But I, with Indiana, he might think they're a paper tiger. We just you just you don't know because he's not going to let that let that be seen. But after the game, I think we'll get a decent sense. Like remember Colorado and how quick he was mm-hmm. to talk about that he thought Nebraska was going to win by double digits. He was continue even even the Monday after that game. He was he was asking, "What did you think? What did you think of that game? What was your prediction for that game?" Oh, I thought you know. So I, I think we'll 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 probably have a better idea next week at this time, especially if Nebraska wins the game, what Matt Rule thought of it. But for now, he's saying what he needs to say. And clearly part of Nebraska's internal drive, the message being delivered to the team this week is embrace this role of being the underdog. We remember just a few weeks ago, Matt Rule talked about how things were changing for Nebraska football. And after a while, uh, all of last year, and really for these players, as long as they've been in the program, Nebraska had been the hunted. I'm sorry, the hunter, the hunter. Nebraska was out hunting the big, the big, uh, big game in college football. And suddenly, when Nebraska got ranked after the Northern Iowa victory and Illinois was coming in, I think that's when the conversation came up. Now they were being hunted. So is the shoe on the other foot this week? It's a question that I asked. To rule, and I think that's what led to to this answer here. But um, or there was another answer similar to it. But but do you think that that changes the dynamic for Nebraska that it can play a different card this week? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, it you know, it, and it's it's not like you can only be one or the other, you know, on any given year. Like it's it's hmm. pretty it's pretty static. Like Nebraska yeah. was always going to be the hunter against. Uh, Ohio State, and they were always going to be the hunted against Northern Iowa, or you know, or whatever. It might be. So, like, you can you can wear both shoes at any any given time, but the dynamic is way different um, this week. And I really truly believe in when he says, you know, that it's a good position for them to be in. Like, you know, he's a motiv- he's he's a motivator. Um, and and you mentioned that Colorado game. You know, you got we got the extra look inside from the Chasing Three documentary the week after, and you know, it turns out they they were using a lot as motivation, whether it was words that were spoken or things that happened last year um, in the game with Colorado. So I don't know if that'll crop up much this week. Um, we'll see, but I, I, I do think they'll probably feed their team some clips about how good Indiana is and, you know, see how, see how the Nebraska kids respond to it. I wonder what Indiana's motivation is for this game. Of course you want to you want to be 7 and 0. Like that's that should be motivation enough. But it seems in today's world of college football unless you're an established power like an Oregon or an Ohio State in this in, within this conference, of course there are others outside of this conference. You're looking for that extra edge, that little chip and and I wonder what it is with Indiana. You we've seen Indiana in the past and this is under a different coach, but we've seen Indiana in the past take some issue with being the team that was perceived to be toward the bottom of the Big Ten, like the 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 basketball school that is rising up in football or or not rising up, whatever it is. I think was it was it Frost who used uh, just a just kind of like a it was it was supposed to be a, a vanilla analogy, and and he he inserted Indiana into the role of like the generic school that just wasn't very good at football. Yep, and the Hoosiers really took issue with that, and I think brought brought it to Lincoln with a chip on their shoulder and 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 used it. I, I don't I don't see any fodder out there at all like that for Indiana to use this week. Not yet, not yet, and I don't think it'll come from the Nebraska side. No, yeah, we're sure. gonna be buttoned up tomorrow when, or today, Tuesday, when we hear from the Huskers. I believe. Yeah, I think so too. Um, so I, I was thinking about it sort of the other way, like you know, there's gonna be. I would imagine there's a whole bunch of extra people following around Indiana football this week. Um, cameras and they're doing stories about them for big noon Saturday and, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Like 
we probably won't hear about any of that stuff until until early Saturday morning. But it's it it probably manifests itself in in pressure more than it does like you know uh, anything else. Uh, it's it's a position that Indiana's not in very often, and now they're looking at their schedule as like, well, we got a chance. And I know I know they think highly of the coach, and they think that he's going to be there for a while. But like, I, it probably. You know they're they're looking at this game saying, well, we're six and a half point favorites, and I know it's against Nebraska, but we're we should and are going to win. Let's let's look and see what's next. Like I don't know, that's um could be I mean, that's arguably where Nebraska was uh, when they played Illinois a few weeks yeah. ago. You know, yeah. So it's yeah. it's it's totally flipped. Yeah, Signetti was was pretty bland. Kurt Signetti, the Indiana coach, was pretty pretty. Um, speaking of buttoned up, which is what I expect from Nebraska players and the coordinators when they visit with the media today, that's what Kurt Signetti was on, on Monday. And, and there was, there's that question. There was, I, there was, I, I had some, I was intrigued, interested to hear what he might have to say because he's been a guy who was outspoken um, both when he first took the job and before the season and predicting big things for Indiana this year. But, you know, now that they're into the thick of things and, and they're six, six and oh, um, he's backed off some of that rhetoric a little bit and was very complimentary of Nebraska and, and Dylan Raiola um, to, to go into this game. So, all right, when we come back after the break, we are going to hear more from Matt Rule at his Monday press conference, including some interesting thoughts on what Rule sees for the future of the Big Ten and the SEC. That's next. All right, Locked On Nebraska viewers and listeners, it is time to highlight our Roy Player of the re- Week. Roy is a new platform that lets fans make contributions directly to their favorite athletes. Download Roy for iOS or Android and enter the referral code Locked On. You'll automatically be entered into a sweepstakes to win $5,000 cash. No purchase necessary. Void where, void where prohibited on that offer. This week... After Nebraska's bye, we have selected for the Roy Player of the Week, as the Roy Player of the Week, drumroll, Sierra Wright, because he earned a black shirt. Sierra Wright earned a black shirt during Nebraska's bye week, along with Brian Buschini, who was last week's Roy Player of the Week. But Sierra Wright, for his outstanding performance in a musical, or no, and his outstanding performance (laughs) in... In in two Big Ten games against Rutgers and Purdue, he has been awarded a jersey that signifies him as a top defensive player on this Nebraska team. So if you enjoyed his performance as much as the Huskers did, you can show him some love. Just hop on Roy, display your appreciation for Sierra Wright, the Roy Player of the Week after his standout performance, and we'll see what happens the rest of the season with uh with it with these picks get off the sidelines and get into the nil game today with roy all right welcome back counter happer from 1620 the zone in omaha mitch sherman from the athletic uh by the way speaking of uh, 1620 the zone in omaha 1620 the zones uh management is uh, very happy because they got some good news today um tell me about the- this the news is that Ohio State and Nebraska are, are going to play each oh, other yes. at 11 o'clock on Big Noon Fox. So that night, not that anybody cares about this, um, and you know the the people over at I Creighton care. University feel good about this as well. Creighton is going to play Purdue, the defending national runners up in a uh, in a exhibition for charity for oh, tornado wow. relief that night. So this is open to the public. It's open to the public, yeah. It, it, in fact, very open to the public. Like, please, you know that that type of thing. Um, and where all the proceeds go to charity and stuff like that. And it's a top fifteen game, and it's an exhibition, obviously. But they knew that if <laughs> if Nebraska is playing at the same time, or maybe even in the mid afternoon window, that their attendance would probably be hurt. Um, and that so our you're telling me being twenty the zone would be very very hurt by this as well. But everything's so good now. You're telling me, Connor, that Creighton is paying attention to something that's going on at Nebraska with Nebraska football? In oh. this in this specific case. I didn't think they even knew that it existed. 
Oh, it, oh, I think they're very well aware. I'm kidding. I think I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. Everybody was rooting for a uh, for an 11 a.m. kickoff time, and that's exactly what we got. So back to back big noons for Nebraska and everybody at 1620 the zone and at Creighton University is happy as well. So yeah, two consecutive big noon kickoffs, the prime time slot in back to back Saturdays for Nebraska. You got the big pregame show. You got Gus and Joel on the call. Lots of eyes will be tuning in. Ohio State and Oregon, this was not big noon kickoff, but just to give you a sense of what Ohio State can draw, attracted an audience last Saturday night of more than 10 million. So the Nebraska has a chance this week and then next week to play in front of a lot of people. A lot of people who may not see Nebraska real often, probably a lot of people who don't necessarily believe in Nebraska. So what kind of an opportunity is this? When you get back-to-back on Big Noon Kickoff, it can be something that boosts your program uh, in, 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 a, in a significant way. And it can also be a risk if you don't show well. So what do you think, Connor, is, is at stake? Is there anything elevated at stake for Nebraska because of the slot, the TV slot that it's found itself in the next two weeks? Oh, I mean, totally. Yeah, a- a- absolutely. Like you, you only get so many of these chances a year. And, and frankly, it's great for, for the conference. I, we're going to hear rule talk about this in just a second, but with those four West coast teams in there's, there's so much brand value in the league. Um, and you know, you're going to get one of those three. If you're if you're one of the top brands and if you're having success on the football season, chances are you're going to end up in one of those three Saturday kind of primetime windows, whether it's Big Noon or 2.30 CBS yeah. or 6.30 NBC or hell, even Friday night on Fox. Like that's a that's a big slot as well now. So, it is. Um, you know, Nebraska's in it for the next two weeks and in likely the, the most watched one. To, yeah, it's always game dependent. Um, so there's always more on the line, you know, when, when you get the national audience and you get the whole, uh, crew coming to the campus and stuff like that, there's going to be increased access. Yeah. That's, that's totally important in this day in college football, where all we're talking about is brand value. You just end up being that team or one of those teams that everybody's talking about, like in that, in yep. that time slot, if you're on big noon, whether it's going, whether it's going well whether it's going poorly, it just propels you into the conversation for, for those three hours on Saturday, early afternoon. And then again, you know, when, when there's the review uh, late Saturday night and, and into Sunday, no matter what happens in the game, it just seems that that's a game that gets traction. And you know, obviously there are recruiting implications. I think there's just implications as far as progress and the perception of Matt Rule's program here. You've had 18 games. People know what he's selling. People understand that that this is this is he's he's the builder. I think people get the fact that that he's that Nebraska's five and one. But you know we can see from from the poll, Nebraska's still sitting outside the top twenty five. That there's that, that there's a there's a large faction who are waiting. I think until these two weeks just to see how Nebraska shows. Not necessarily if it's going to go two and zero. Oh. Like I mean, who's expecting Nebraska to to go two and zero? Oh? Not not many. But but how are they going to show? Is yeah. this going to look like a big boy program over these next two Saturdays? A huge a huge question. And I, I think it's one that w- is going to drive the conversation around Nebraska football for quite some time. Yeah, they don't have to win. I'm with you. They it's not like they have to. I mean, you. You like to win one of out of them, obviously, but like, yeah, I don't know. You know, go zero and two against yeah. Ohio State. It's it's not going to be sixty two to three, but what is it going to be? You know, people are curious. Mm-hmm. Um, and so let's play this clip here from Matt Rule, um, from Monday at his press conference about the weekend that was in the Big Ten. Of course, that saw Oregon beat Ohio State. That saw Penn State and USC play a really good game. We talked about those games a little bit. Wisconsin beating Rutgers, and now you look ahead, and it's. <laughs> You know, it's all bangers the last, you know, five, six weeks of the season here. Great games on tap and a lot left to be decided. Here's Matt Rule on sort of the the landscape of the Big Ten at the moment. The travel, the weather, like that was hard to throw the ball last week against Rutgers. That was that was 40 to 50 mile hour gusts, at least is what it said. You know, it was, it was hard. I think you're going to see a lot of unpredictability. It's like the NFL, right? You never know in the NFL who's a, a good year in college football moving forward is going to be like eight and four, nine and three. Um it's just, it's just what it is. It's why, you know, there's a lot of teams that do really well, but they don't not playing who we're playing. It's just a different league, right? And the Big Ten, the SEC have just, they've just evolved. Like how he, uh, like how he threw that in there about the wind, um, and how yeah. it made that Rutgers game because he knows how his fans are reacting to 
Wisconsin beating the crap out of Rutgers this past weekend. He he heard that for sure. I also liked how he threw it, and I didn't catch this. I caught it, but I didn't necessarily think about it until I listened to it here for like the fourth time. You notice how he threw He didn't need to talk about the SEC in this conversation. Mm-hmm. It could have just been about the Big Ten, but he threw in the SEC. The last time that Matt Rule went out and kind of stuck his chest out for the Big Ten as a whole was at that. Big Ten Media Days, and he got and he got taken down a peg or at least attempted to be taken down a peg by none, none other than Paul Feinbaum, the chief defender of the SEC. So here he goes again talking about the Big Ten and its, its strength across the board. And I'm going to include the SEC in here, like the Big Ten and the SEC are like the NFL. So um, as we have come to know with Matt Rule, there's very little that happens by chance. And when he yep. says something, it's it's um, it's it's deliberate. I think this was deliberate too to um, to bring up the SEC. He even br- later in that clip, he brought up Vanderbilt and said, as an example for. It's, it's not really parity in college football because it's not evenly distributed. Like parity would imply that there's 65 right. teams out there that are, that are becoming even or 130, whatever, that are, that are pushing upward. No, this is two leagues that he's talking about. And he mentions Vanderbilt beats Alabama and then, and then, and then goes and takes it to, to Kentucky the next week. And you look in the Big Ten, he didn't mention this one, but the Big Ten example, Washington gets, gets pounded at Iowa one week after the Huskies beat Michigan, the defending national champ at home. So um, he's right. He's right. There's competition across the board in the big 10 and the sec that isn't happening in other top leagues. Well, and I think there was a little, a little kind of wink to the idea, which this is an off season topic that we usually get into, but you know, those West coast teams that are coming in they're they are right now in the middle of finding out how difficult it is to play in the conference. Yeah. You might look in the league and you say, ah, oh, well, gosh, it's, you know, we got this stretch of Purdue, Wisconsin, Illinois, and Penn state, you know, we can win three out of those four and you map it out that way. And all of a sudden Purdue smacks you in the face and you're like, what happened? You know, because whatever, you know, whatever carry over from the previous week and, and all that stuff. Um, it, Nebraska has a really good under, under this coach has a really good understanding of, of what that means and how difficult that is. And I, I think it just takes, you know, in Nebraska's take uh, case, it took years and years and years and more than a decade of hard, hard lessons to, to finally figure that out um, and, and understand that and embrace it a little bit. And so it probably will take the West coast school some time as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. We're going to take a a second break here. And when we come back, we'll hear, more from Matt Rule on Monday at his press conference. This one, maybe some surprising comments about college football players trash talking that he saw in his Saturday of viewing while Nebraska was on a bye. That's next. All right, sports fans, uh, you can get in on the action with the FanDuel Sportsbook. We would invite you to, and we would like you to do it right now if you possibly can. America's number one sportsbook, that is FanDuel. So, Speaking of right now, if you're watching a football game right at this moment while you're listening to this podcast, I know people who will watch a football game and they will listen to a podcast while they watch a football game. So take this message as a sign. Pull up the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Make the live wager. You know what you're doing. Trust yourself and you can get in on the sweet, sweet action. If you're a new FanDuel customer, you get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. Once again, $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. When you place your first $5 bet, no reason to not do it. FanDuel.com and to FanDuel.com. That is FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Final segment here on this Tuesday. Thanks for joining us on the Locked On Nebraska podcast. I'm Mitch Sherman from The Athletic. Connor Happer, 1620 The Zone, is with me. I mentioned on Monday that Nebraska volleyball might take over the top spot, the number one spot in the ABCA <laughs> coaches poll. Did not happen. Did not. Stayed atop of the poll. Just eked past Nebraska. They're number two. Um, both teams have lost to SMU um, just figured, uh, you know, hey, these volleyball pools probably work like football pools. Who's <laughs> like, who's yeah, who's pit. lost the most recently? Exactly, Pitt just lost to SMU. You can't was still be number one. Yeah, weird, but, but whatever. But Pitt is, and they're not going to play until the NCAA tournament. If if in fact uh, both teams make it far enough to uh, 
to get to a matchup, which would probably come in Louisville. I don't, I don't really see yeah. much derailing either of these teams from being a, a top seed come December. So something to watch. Nebraska probably won't be number one now when it goes to Wisconsin for that huge match on November 1st because Pitt uh, is, is still there unless the Panthers run into something in the ACC. All right. Um, something that surprised me a bit out of Lincoln on Monday. Um, I did not have on my Matt Rule bingo board him giving us 90 seconds on players in college football talking trash and taunting and putting their teams uh, behind their own personal brand. And watching but, anime. Yeah. Um, <laughs> enlighten me on that when we come back from listening to the... Uh, That's what he said. To, to the Matt, did, did he, okay, I don't think it's in this clip. But, they uh, might I not will, be in the clip, but he had he mentioned how kids watch anime or something like that. I remember watching it. <laughs> He kind of went old man to, uh, on on Monday. That is that is that is in fact old man. All right, uh, I I I would shake my head at this at the exact same thing. Um, let's listen to what Matt Rule had to say here on Monday in Lincoln. That actually really cares about each other, and if you have a team that really wants to see each other, like really wants to see each other be successful, and is there for the team, then you have a chance to win on the road. I watched a lot of football. One thing about college football right now, there's a lot of guys out there, and the whole time they're playing, they're playing for their personal brand. Like they're, I mean, like, you know, they they could do something for the team. They could take a knee. They could step out of bounds. They could end the game. They, you know, and instead it's all, you know, it's all trash. Watching college football is hard now. It's all trash talking and, and really excessive trash talking. It's you beat a team and you're waving goodbye at them, you know. And we did Iowa did that to us last year. I mean, it's like some, there's sometimes rivalries. I get it, but like. I don't want to see our team do that. I want to see our team walk out. And sh- if you watch me, I can shake their team's hand. I take, I shake the players we game plan for. I shake their hand. And um, yes, I just, I just, um, I struggled a little bit with that this weekend watching college football. Like every time, every time a guy makes a play, it's like he has to turn and tell the guy he made a play. You know, and, and trust me, I'm all for a little trash talk. But there's a way to do it in a way that doesn't, I don't know, disrespect the game and disrespect your opponent. I love that. I I love that clip. I I love it so much. And and he knows this too. He knows that he is fighting a losing battle. The kids are not going to stop taunting, but he gets to be the guy <laughs> on the sideline to tell the kids to stop doing that and we, you know, we teach him to play the right way. I don't know where I don't know where that guy got that, you know. And by the way, Mitch, you know what I learned today? That uh, so you know the the celebration where the defensive backs, you know, get the sword and they, they sheathe the sword. I heard about this today and I've already forgotten what this means or what this is a part of. So we had Sam McEwen on our show today and, and Sam had a uh, Monday. Sorry. We're recording this Monday night, whatever. Um, (laughs) Sam, uh, Sam was like, he's, he's in touch with what's going on in the high schools because he's has a high school aged daughter. And you, and apparently she told him, that the celebration that looks like a sword is actually buckling up a seatbelt. Oh yeah. It's, it's not, it doesn't have anything to do with the sword, which I always thought, I don't know what's going on with the celebrations these days, but that's, that was new information to me. It makes no sense to me. I heard about this also, but I heard about it six degrees of separation from John Bishop on your radio station. Yeah. He asked me about about it. it. Oh yeah. 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 I don't I, what I don't even know what to say. I don't know what it means. I don't know why they're doing that. But it all kind of goes back into this commentary that Matt Rule had. And he was kind of like an old man shaking his fist at at people here. I wonder because he doesn't say things by accident. There's always a deeper purpose to him talking about any subject, especially if he talks about it for 90 seconds in front of all these cameras at his press conference. What, what was, is he talking to, to the recruits parents here? Like it's a stretch. Like I'm going to be the one who will, who will, who will fight right alongside you, mom and dad to keep your kids in line while they're here at Nebraska to play for the Husker. I I don't, I don't know. Um, I mean, there's like a little bit of a point here that he's making when this question is asked about going on the road. That's, that's, that's Sam asked the question and that's where it's coming from is what you've taken a team on the road. What, what do you, what did you learn from that experience that can help you on Saturday? And he said, 
we're a team that's together. Nebraska is a team that's together. And I'm seeing all these other teams out there as I watch college football that aren't together because it's a player playing for himself, not for his team. And that's not <laughs> what Nebraska is about. So I, okay. All right. Great. I'll tell you what, I, I, I know what game he was talking about too, when he was talking about all the taunting, that'd be the one in Boulder. And it wasn't, oh. it, it wasn't involving Colorado. It was K state. <laughs> They were they were taunting so much. Like oh, oh I saw kids. Avery Johnson do the Deion Sanders dance in the end zone. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. So I'm sure that was the game he was talking about. He's a bit of a night owl. So I I, I bet that was it. You know, he watched that game and was like, man, probably just shaking his head. You know. Ah. Did you uh, did you make it up for that? Did you stay up for that entire game? I did. Yeah. The, Colorado will never play in a normal game again. By the way, I fell asleep after Colorado scored to go up uh, four, three or four yeah. late in that game. I fell asleep during the commercial, and I so I missed the Kansas State, the three-play 80-yard drive, <laughs> which ended with Johnson, the K-State quarterback, dancing like Dion in the end zone. I later saw the highlight, and I woke up like as as the teams were leaving the field and said, oh, okay, it's one in the morning. I need to... <laughs> I need to go to bed now, but you're right. I think Rule was like wide awake watching that thing. Yeah, no doubt. He later fell asleep in his office as he uh, detailed today, uh, Monday during, during the presser. Yeah. Okay, so just a couple of the odds and ends here on the rule on the rule stuff on Monday. Uh, he said he gets there, he gets to the office at four thirty, watches tape. Some of the other guy, coaches go and work out. He watches tape, and uh, to on Monday he fell asleep, and Dylan Raiola knocked on his door and woke him up. And said, "Coach, what are you, what are you doing?" So that's that's one. Um, and then I, I said the thing about the anime thing earlier. Um, he that was in the answer to the question about um, uh, about what they did during the bye week. Um, so we played some pretty good teams, you know. And other than that, I think you know, kids sat in their dorm room and watched anime or whatever they watched these days. He was all over the place. Um, and then at the very end, uh, he said that his foot was cramping up and he, he had, to, oh yeah, he another old leave. man. That was an old man move right there for sure. He did. He was tapping his foot and he said it was cramping up. Uh, and, and then I think his, his, his new, his usual commentary as he exits the podium was he made some comment about how pizza. we got pizza for you today. Got the yeah. Valentino's. <laughs> I skipped the Valentinos. I skipped the Valentinos on Monday. Good for you. It's 1030 in the morning, getting there for Val's. I said, no, I can pass on pizza at 1030 in the morning. And it was almost noon by the time I left. But at that point, it was cold. They had these giant breadsticks. There was some commentary among the media about the, the like the supersized breadsticks that 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 came from Val's. I, I just I just I scoffed at the whole thing. Said, wow. don't give it. Don't don't bring it here. That's quite the temptation. I'm proud of you. You did you did a great job. I, I I would not have been able to do the same as much as I don't want it and I don't want to feel what happens after that. I would have given in a hundred percent. Yeah, it's a rare. It's a, it was a rare win for me on uh, on being offered free pizza. All right, I think we've taken this down uh, deep enough, uh, deep to too deep enough levels. I need to wrap it up. We'll be back with you on Wednesday to react to what Tony White, Marcus Satterfield, Dylan Raiola. Ty Robinson, John Bullock, whoever else we hear from at Nebraska's media availability speaking today on Tuesday have to say thank you for making Locked On Nebraska your first listen today. Now go check out the Locked On College Football Podcast. Spencer McLaughlin is there, and he's going to get you through week eight of an exciting season. You can find the link to that show in the description of this show. All of it is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.